Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of The Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, best-selling author, and member of the United States Supreme Court Bar. If you haven't subscribed to The Four Boxes Diner, please do so and show your support for the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. Okay, folks, huge news. I talked about this last night. I told you the Supreme Court was going to do this today, and they've just done it. They actually did it a few hours ahead of time. They were originally, I thought, going to do it at 2.30 today. That's what they usually do, but I think because... Justice Breyer is retiring at noon today, New York time. And Justice Brown Jackson is going to be the new justice around that time. I'm guessing the court decided to move these decisions up fast, not to interfere with those proceedings. What happened today? Very good news when it comes to ATF power and less good news, but not terrible news when it comes to all the other Second Amendment cases. Let me start quickly here. The U.S. Supreme Court decision in West Virginia versus EPA dealt with the powers of administrative agencies, regulatory bodies such as the EPA, the FDA, and yes, the ATF and all the administrative agencies, they were set in policy. The Supreme Court was set in a precedent or policy, if you will, for how to interpret the federal statutes that allow these agencies to function. And the Supreme Court today, in a major ruling, said that the EPA lacked authority, lacked authority to do certain things when it came to so-called greenhouse gases. Now, the specifics of that case, I'm not going to dwell on. It's not that important for our purposes. What is important for gun owners in the Second Amendment is this, that the Supreme Court made it clear that these agencies may not act on major policy questions without clear and unequivocal guidance, meaning statutes, from Congress. Now, why does this matter to the Second Amendment community? Because, for example, we know that the ATF often implements various forms of gun control in the name of statutes passed decades and decades earlier, all the way back to the 1930s to the National Firearms Act. And this Supreme Court decision is likely going to be a precedent that can be used to limit the authority of the ATF. For example, the ATF defined a bump stock as a machine gun using no congressional statute. They just did it using their regulatory authority. And now today, with this precedent involving the EPA, which is applicable to the ATF because they're also an administrative agency, there's a very good chance, in my opinion, that this precedent will shrink, cut off, limit dramatically the power of the ATF to do rulemaking and to issue their own regulations that are anti-gun. So that's a first good news today in favor of the Second Amendment. Now, on these other Second Amendment cases, I consider this to be not great news, but not terrible news, kind of like expected news. That is, all the Second Amendment cases, which I talked about the other day, that would be the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Club versus... Uh, Grewal, that would be Bianchi, that would be Young versus Hawaii. All these cases have been GVR'd. So let me remind you what these cases are about. All these Second Amendment cases have been GVR'd, which means they were granted cert, their lower court decisions against the Second Amendment were vacated, of were vacated, which means all those anti gun precedents that these cases set are no longer the law of the land. They've been vacated. And the Supreme Court says, we're going to take these cases, we're sending them back to the lower courts to be reconsidered and redecided in, in light of our ruling in Nyserpa versus Bruin. And those cases are as follows. Bianchi versus Frosch, which is the Maryland assault weapons case, the so-called assault weapons case. The Supreme Court ruled that this case, that the lower court decision that says that assault weapon bans are constitutional has been vacated. The Supreme Court vacated that decision and has sent it back to the Fourth Circuit to reconsider and redecide in light of Nyserpa versus Bruin. Also, in again, the New Jersey case versus, uh, well, it was Grewal. Now I think it's Bruck uh, because I think they changed the name of the defendant because of, you know, governmental things. But the bottom line is this is the New Jersey so-called large capacity magazine case. The decision against the Second Amendment by the Third Circuit out of New Jersey, has been vacated, meaning that the Supreme Court granted cert, they took the case and instantly vacated that decision against the Second Amendment and sent the case back to New Jersey for further considerations in light of the new, much more favorable standard for gun owners in Nicerpa versus Bruin than the prior one, which was that tiers of scrutiny balancing stuff, which was all nonsense and never should have been used, but it was by the anti-gun courts, unfortunately. But that has been thrown in the trash bin of history by the U.S. Supreme Court involving Second Amendment cases and 
thank God for that. That is great news. They've also sent back Duncan versus Bonta. Uh, all of our fans in California, you know that's the California Large Capacity Magazine case. That decision by the Ninth Circuit has been, again, vacated. It is not the law anymore that the Supreme Court has said that we have granted cert in that case. We are vacating that decision, and we're sending it back to the Ninth Circuit for them to reconsider what's going to go on there. Likewise, Young versus Hawaii. In Young versus Hawaii, this is a question about Hawaii's ban on open carry. It was a concealed, it was a, it was a carry case, actually. I think it touched on open carry. Again, the Supreme Court granted cert, vacated that decision by the Ninth Circuit against the Second Amendment and says goodbye and sent it back down again for the Ninth Circuit to reconsider in light of the very favorable standards in favor of gun owners in Ninth Circuit versus Bruin. Now, Gun bump stocks, bump stocks. We just had this major ruling in the EPA case, which I actually think has sets precedent for what will happen with the bump stock cases. There are two bump stock cases before the Supreme Court right now. The Supreme Court, interestingly, did not do anything with them today. Those cases are still under consideration. They will likely be under consideration for several months, probably until the new justice, Justice Brown Jackson, gets on the court, which will happen, I believe, this afternoon when she's sworn in. Um, and then several months from now, when the court reconvenes and has another conference to discuss what further cases to take this fall and next term, those bump stock cases, I'm guessing, will be decided then. And I'm sure they will look very carefully at what they just decided in the EPA case to see whether or not those bump stock cases, which again, as you know, the question is not a Second Amendment question. The bump stock case over the Supreme Court is not a Second Amendment question. The legal question is this. Did the AT as a group of unelected bureaucrats, an administrative agency, a regulatory agency, did they have the legal authority under existing federal statutory law, going back to the 1930s, the National Firearms Act, did they have authority to say that that piece of plastic, which is a bump stock, somehow is a machine gun, an automatic weapon? And the ATF basically said, yeah, we think that regulation it is. We think it is. Now, as to whether or not there's authority to conclude that, that, that ATF has the authority to say this piece of plastic is a machine gun, needless to say, I am personally very skeptical. And I think the Supreme Court is probably also very skeptical. But whether or not they take that case in light of this EPA ruling, I think is dramatically increased. But we're not going to know about that bump stock case for several months. And again, the bump stock case is not specifically a Second Amendment case. It's an administrative agency case. But that's very important for our rights because the ATF really has the authority. or They don't have the authority, but they act on purported authority to do all sorts of things to limit gun rights, in my opinion. Okay, so that's the update here from the Supreme Court. I hope you learned something here today. If you haven't subscribed, please do so to the Four Boxes Diner. And we'll see you again soon here at the Four. Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.